Continuing with reporting on data results, we'll do another one of the guidelines. This one is one of my favorite and I think one of the most underused uh, when it packs a big punch, and that's to make order meaningful. A lot of times your data will have some kind of implicit order that R is remembering it in. And sometimes it's one that doesn't help a lot in expressing something that you want to show. You can often add a lot to your graphs by using order to show rank or so, show some other feature that you want to help bring out and bring the viewer's attention to. This is often something that you'll use with factor variables or in some cases with data that might be stored with columns that might be stored as categorical variables, but then get coerced into factors once you start creating the plot. So let me show an example of this. This is using the World Cup data and it's showing the mean time per player in minutes for each team. On the left, I have the default, and you can see here that the order for that is just alphabetical. It's starting with the teams that start with an A and ending with the ones near the end of the alphabet that start with U. We could certainly go through this and pick a team that we're interested in and go across and try to look at the point and see where that lines up with time. And we can also certainly go through and try to do things like see which team had the highest mean time per player and then go across and try to see which, which uh, team that was. However, if we just change the order that we're showing these on the y-axis, those kinds of features automatically draw the viewer's eye. So on the right, I've rearranged these. So they go from the country that had the highest mean time per player in minutes to the ones with the lowest. And automatically your eye is drawn to things like what were the top four teams? And you can see right away just by going down the list here. You can also see key breaking points. Like you can see down here a clear indication that maybe these are all the teams that did not make it out of the first round and so did not continue playing more, more games as the number of rounds went on. I just mentioned that a lot of times the default is alphabetical. And um, this is a tweet that went out a couple of years ago on April 1st that I think it's really beautiful in showing how silly it is sometimes to show data using, using alphabetical order rather than something more meaningful. So this is from um, Australia's Bureau of Meteorology. And they said, we're updating how rainbows appear in Australia. Colors will now be in alphabetical order. <laughs> and they've even taken the kind of abbreviation that people use a lot of times for rainbows and shifted it. So it is now in alphabetical order. And you can see down here, they've even changed it for the rainbow itself. And of course, this is a little bit ridiculous because the real order of the rainbow is based on the physics behind how we see those different colors and how they get refracted and all of that. Uh, they also note this is the biggest change since 1975 when they changed from grayscale to color. Um, another important landmark in data visualization. I'm just going to talk a little bit this week about how we can do that in R, just to give you more of a taste of how factors work. But really, the way that you do this often, almost always, will not be something in the ggplot code itself, but it will instead be using functions from a package called forecasts. A lot of times it makes sense to do that mutation in the data before you even go into plotting. You can use this forecasts functions inside your ggplot code too. It just can get a little bit long and messy. But in both of those cases, it's not something that ggplot's doing to rearrange that order. It's something where you've made that change in the underlying data itself using uh, functions from something for factor variables like the forecasts package. The symbolism of these is the factor relevel. And this relevel changes the levels kind of by hand. You have to put them in. We'll also look in later weeks at some different functions that let you reorder things like um, by another column. So we showed that example where they were ordered by the mean time that each player played. As a note, before I show a little bit of an example here, there is a whole cheat sheet about factors specifically going into this forecast function. And again, we will have some video lectures later in, in the course where we go really deeply in how, into how to work with factors. And that is really what you need to do for being able to switch the order when you have a factor variable that you are trying to, to change the order of in ggplot rather than it being something encoded in ggplot itself.
So let's just look at this cartoon example so I can give you just a taste of how this is working and how R is processing it. You could have a vector called hair color that shows a factor. And so that might go through and have different categories of hair color like brown and red and blonde. If you remember from earlier when we talked about factors, when we first introduced them um, a few, a chapter or so ago, we see these nice labels when we print out the factor of brown and red and blonde and so on. But if it's saved as a factor data type, then underneath R is remembering that as a number. So it has somewhere a little table where it's taken each of those levels and assigned it a number. And then it just remembers that number when it's remembering the whole vector. And this saves it a little bit of room as it's processing. And then there are also, when you get into statistical modeling and things like that, there are a few advantages uh, for R when it comes in there. So that's how R is thinking about it. But R has this clear order in that table. So it's got one with the smallest numeric vector and then one with the next highest and the next highest and so on. You can use factor relevel to change the, the order and the number that R is kind of matching those up with. So let's look at this example just really quickly in R. And in this case, we could make that hair color vector. So I'll make it first as a character vector, and then we'll use as.factor to change it into a factor. So we'll put in, let's see, brown, and then blonde. Um, and let's do brown and blonde again. All right, so if we look at this, it's going to be a character class. And it's just going to print out those four. But we can reassign it, and we can do as.factor to do that. Now when we print it out, let's see that we get this little levels underneath. So at this point, it's actually recognizing it as a factor. If we wanted to, we can pipe into class just to double check. Oh, well, I need to make sure that I load dplyr for that. So we can get our pipe symbol. All right, let's do that again. So now you can see that it does have the factor class. Now when we, when we print out the full thing again, these levels, that blonde, brown, red, that's, that is the level that R is remembering it as. It's remembering any of the blonde ones as a one, any of the brown as a two, any of the red as a three. And we can double check that if we want to. We could use the function as.numeric. That will force it into that numeric class so it'll bring out that underlying number for us. And you can see that where we had brown before, it's doing that second level of brown. Where we had blonde before, it's doing that, second, that first level, one. And again, it just set those up alphabetically. Now we can do the forecast package, and you might need to install it if you don't have it already. But then you can call it using library. And one thing that we can do, we can reassign hair color. Let's see if I can find some old code and save some time. All right, so let's take that out. And then let's do that factor re-level. We'll get there. There we go. Now this lets us just by hand put in the names of the different levels that we put them in in the order that we want R to store them in that underlying kind of little levels table. So if we wanted to have red first, we can put in red and then we can put in blonde and then brown if we want that order. Now when we run hair color, you can see that that level has changed. Now red is the first one that's mentioned. And if we look at it for as numeric, we can see again that the numbers that are underneath have changed. So what this means is now when we plot it, the first thing it's going to show is going to be what the first level was. And we've changed that now before it was blonde and now it's red. So that's allowed us to change the order by doing this. We'll work a lot more with this as we go later in the class. But I did want you to start getting this idea of why the when you plot an x or a y axis that's lining up, that's mapping to a column that has that factor class, why it picks the order that it picks, and why you can't just change it using something in ggplot itself, why you really need to go through and figure out a way to change the way that R save that in, it, when it set up that, that uh, column in the factor class. I wanted to end this with a quote from a show that I really show, I really enjoy. Um, 
It's called The West Wing. It's about a, a president named Judd Bartlett and his administration. And um, it's off the air now, but they still have them on Netflix. But there's a guy who kind of helps with polling and helps with advice as the president's running for re-election. And he makes this point that there are some things that cost you very little or nothing that are very easy to do once you get the hang of them, but that can make a huge impact. And he does it with an example from from um, from racing on, on boats, on yachts, I guess, and, and how there's something where you can just clean up a little bit and it takes some of the drag off. And it's so easy to do, but it gives this advantage. And he has this quote, if you think I'm going to miss even one opportunity to pick up half a mile boat speed, you're absolutely out of your mind. When it costs us nothing, when we give up nothing, you're out of your mind. And I feel that way when I look at a graph sometimes and somebody, there's a meaningful order in some way or another to one of the factors they're showing and it's just been shown alphabetically. You're you're it costs you almost nothing to make that change and it's such a big gain. So I really do hope as you continue through this class, you'll look a lot as we start talking with factors and start playing around with that in your in your plots when you do juju plot. So you can take advantage of that part anytime you're plotting a factor.